Hello family, these next two messages I share my journey of my rapid declining health during the Life from Light event. The event was beautiful and was so refreshing and uplifting to meet some of the heart dwellers who came out to volunteer. It felt like family immediately. Three of my sisters came to the event, bringing with them my two nieces. One of them was Naomi, whom I raised and I've shared her on the channel during the earlier years. She's now seven years old and still loves Jesus. At the end of this message, I'll share a clip of her from the event. She has such a sweet message for expecting mothers. We we're all so busy that we didn't take many photos for the event, but the few we have, I'll share with you. The Lord has been faithful through the three-day fast. The pain would come and go, and on the fourth day, woke up feeling as though I had been completely healed and was able to get a lot done. But it hit me again in the evening and had me in bed shivering with chills on the fifth day. I was in so much pain, completely weak, disoriented, and unable to walk straight. Then the symptoms of vomiting came. The event was the next day, and I didn't see how I was able to do it. I kept asking the Lord and the Bible promises if I should go to the hospital, but I kept getting no. So I felt that he wanted to heal me his way and to rely on his grace. I reached out to the volunteers of the event who had came in that day from various states, and we all gathered together to pray for me and each other. By the evening, I was feeling a little better, and at least I was able to stand. By the morning, the day of the event, I felt completely healed again. I know now I was riding on God's grace like a wave, and he carried me throughout the majority of the event. Until the last two hours, the pain came back violently, more than it was the whole week. I had not had a fever yet, but I got it then, and it felt as though it was burning from the inside out on fire. Once the event was finished, I had everyone else close down and told my sisters to take me straight home. I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to anyone. Upon arriving home, my sisters cooked me some soup as I stayed in my room with my body on fire. I moaned as I tossed back and forth, asking the Lord for mercy. The following day, I couldn't take it anymore, and the ladies couldn't either. Mother Elizabeth decided to take me to the hospital. I was so weak, barely able to walk, body full of pain and delirious. We went to the urgent care and was told to go to the hospital instead. When we arrived and I was admitted, I found out they had never treated malaria and didn't know what to do. They actually thought I had Ebola for a minute, and Elizabeth had to leave, so I was quarantined. When they found out it wasn't Ebola but malaria, I had to be air flighted to Albuquerque, a nearby city for treatment at a bigger hospital. I was in pain all over, and I had in my mind that maybe once I get to the hospital, I would be able to finally get medication and rest because I hadn't properly slept for five days because of the pain. I was so wrong. Going to the hospital would be one of the biggest temptations to just give up on life. That's where I met the Lord's passion. That is where I met silence from God. And that is where I had to war with my will and have others cover me in prayer to fight to live. The first night was the most difficult. Not only was I in pain, but the demonic attacks were so intense. I was seeing shadows all in my mind's eye when I would close my eyes, various demonic figures and faces. Then I saw a demon walk past me, stop and turn to me face to face. He tried to come even close to touch me, but his face hit like a glass wall of some kind, and I realized I was being protected. There was a glass wall between us. I then heard him say, now is the time for victory. Immediately I saw light from the sky, from the roof of my hospital room. Zeal entered my room and sliced him in half. Zeal, by the way, is my garden angel. Then there was a huge beast-like dog that was running around my bed and attacked Zeal. I then saw another angel come with power. I now know his name is Yeshel, my other guardian angel, whom I met for the first time. He stabbed the dog demon with a sword and it vanished. Zeal told me not to fear, that there were two angels stationed at my door with huge staffs 
and I saw them. He then asked me to come with him. So I got off of bed in the spirit and saw many demons in the hospital accompanying nurses. And the Lord brought you here to minister to people. Then I came out of the vision. I found myself still full of fear the whole night as I had three more demonic attacks from the devils and was receiving prayer from all the heart dwellers all over the world. I now know their prayers carried me through those difficult two days. The Lord indeed had me minister to three nurses that night, came in the room, and I felt a peace and could hear whooshing sounds in my ear, like many angel wings. I was in so much pain, it was hard for me to turn, but I simply asked her if she was a Christian. She said, uh, I'm a bit all over the place. I say there are angels with you. Someone is praying for you, and God is with you. She broke down crying in tears, and we prayed together. The next video is just a real and raw recording I did once I was getting to my fourth day at the hospital. I was losing hope by then, because nothing had changed, and the doctors didn't know what to do. The pain and the symptoms still lingered. Mother Elizabeth told me, when Father Zeke was praying, he saw me with a crown of thorns on my head and had such intense pain at the back of my neck and on my back, they thought I had meningitis. Mother Claire said she saw me also with ropes around my neck they used to tie Jesus with. I had been so consumed in hopelessness and despair, but those words actually pulled me up again, reminding myself of the cross and that I was suffering with Jesus. And it was Thursday, the day before his passion. On Friday, after they had taken him before Caiaphas, that evening he was secretly tortured all night before seeing Pilate. So I began to unite myself with Jesus in the most intimate way. Imagine myself with him in the garden, then before Caiaphas, and with the Roman soldiers being tortured. And I share that in the next recording. I'm sharing these things in hope that it gives just one person hope and a willingness to persevere no matter what God allows in your life. God bless you, family. Thank you so much for all those who prayed for me. I'm here because of them. And thank you for those who continue to donate and bless this ministry. All that you give reaches different parts of the world. May the Lord give us all the grace to persevere in the most difficult trials. I made the Life from Light event. I have the infamous Naomi here. Everybody's heard about you, Naomi. And your prayers, and Ellie too as well. Guys, it's been such a blessing in my life. So I want to introduce you guys. Say hi to the Heart Dwells family. Say hi, Ellie. Uh, hey, say hi, Naomi. Hi. What do you want to say to the whole channel who's watching you? Um, about Jesus. Um, if you're a girl and you're pregnant and you, um, you want you want to kill your baby you don't know if your baby's cute or not yeah. amen. And even though if it's not cute still keep it yes. no matter what amen and amen amen i mean wonderful message that's my girl i just love her so much so uh just pray for me i'm still recovering over oh. the sickness but there's such a joy and all my sisters here i do videos so you guys can meet them that's as well i love you guys bye